minutes. <laughs> okay, Tim, how are you? Good. Uh, would you like to share your testimony with viewers? Sure, I'd share my testimony with uh, my viewers here. Uh, back in 1985, a fellow by the name of Mike Tabers, I was living with him and three or four other guys, forget how many at the time. We rented a, a house and <clears throat> I had been searching for some time for the Lord and didn't know the proper channels. And of course being with a bunch of partiers in a, in a house didn't make it any easier. Mike was uh, a, a unique sort in that he could separate uh, he could separate, despite the fact of his inabilities in terms of reading and, and writing and whatnot, uh, he had a pretty good testimony for the Lord. So at times he would be preaching among us, and of course we'd be all scoffing at him and making, it, making a big joke of this, but in the back of my mind I'm thinking, you know, sometime I wouldn't mind actually sitting down going through this guy on a few things. So sure enough, one day everybody's gone, Mike and I were sitting at the kitchen table, and he cracks open the Bible. And you have to appreciate that Mike was very illiterate. He didn't know his way around the book very much, but he had a great degree of faith, and he understood enough to bridge me through where I needed to appreciate where I stood as a sinner and how to bring me to salvation. So we sat there, and he basically said, Tim, uh, do, you, do you believe you're a sinner? And of course, you know, that's a no-brainer. I understood I was, I was a sinner. And then he goes through the typical plan of, you know, what do you, if, if that Christ died for our sins, and, and uh, if you believe Christ died for your sins, and he was buried and risen on the third day, and we're prepared to claim that, you can know you're saved. So, <clears throat> he's fumbling around the, the, the scriptures, and you can't really find the verses. So I just simply came out and said, Mike, just tell me what i got to do to get saved. I, 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 based on your testimony, based on the fruit I see in your life, I know that God's real in you, in your life, and uh, so just tell me basically what I have to do. So he said, Tim, we're going to have to acknowledge before God that we're sinners. We're going to have to acknowledge before God that Christ died for all your sins, paid for them in full. We're going to have to acknowledge before our God that Christ was buried and that he was risen on the third day. We serve a resurrected Jesus Christ. And you're going to have to plead the precious blood of Jesus Christ as the only grounds by which you can be justified. Now, he didn't say exactly in those words, but that was the implication in terms of our discussion. I understood fully that I was exercising faith in blood, the blood atonement, and that my sins uh, were going to be covered, and that uh, by accepting Jesus Christ and receiving the blood of atonement and payment that I could walk away from that kitchen table knowing I was saved. So we bowed our heads and he helped lead me in prayer and he brought me through all the hurdles to touch on all those items and then he asked me after, Tim, are you saved? I said, that's what the book says, I'm saved. So we went through and we went through Romans 10, 9 and 10 and you know, Titus and some of the other passages of Scripture to confirm my position before the Lord. And of course, I knew beyond any shadow of doubt at that time that I was saved and that uh, nothing could separate me from the love of Christ. So, you know, it took a while there afterwards, God, to work in me uh, to try to bring about any fruit. But long shot of all, that's pretty much the, the story on my part. And uh, you have anything else there, Andy? You want to add or ask? Pretty much fine. Uh, how long did it really take you to develop an understanding of uh, the Word of God? Well, a good understanding. Uh, it didn't take me very long to get secured. Okay, uh, those passages jumped off the page when, when, I, when the first time I read the Bible. They came off the page very clearly. And from that standpoint, you've been saved what? 20, 19, 23, 20 years? 23 years. 23 years. In 23 years, how many times have you read the Bible? Working on my 100th time right now. 100th time? Yeah. So in those 23 years, it's been a, a building process? Absolutely. Well, for the first two years, really, the first two years were totally right off. Uh, I, didn't, I started to exercise some faith in the early going. I got some resistance. I fell away. And uh, I kind of lost my assurance until some people came back, re uh, rehashed over 
what had taken effect and then that rekindled my faith again and then uh, so really I didn't get started until about 1987. So there was a couple of years. The first six months I was I was doing not too bad but of course I had a lot of baggage of my, of my past that I had to try to discard and some of it I wanted to hang on to. How has your approach to preaching changed uh, since you <laughs> Well, if you, anyone who knew me when I first got started uh, preaching would have known that I was kind of abrasive, uh, in your face kind of a preacher. Uh, you know, I'd go down, go right down the street, carry my Bible under my arm, and, uh, you know, talk to people on the street. And, uh, you know, I had a, a few conversions uh, there, but they were few and far between. Uh, but I just had to kind of mellow myself out. It was pretty rough around the edges there, but over time things have mellowed out somewhat. All right, uh, thanks, Tim. You bet. Take care.